Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of full wave control rectifier with R load in MATLAB. This is the circuit diagram. One of the major differences with respect to R load is that the output voltage will go in the negative direction due to the presence of inductive load. With the suitable value of inductor that is selected, you can have continuous mode of operation and uh, current will continuously flow from the source to the load. Hence this mode is called as continuous conduction mode. We can also have discontinuous conduction mode by choosing a lower value of inductor in comparison only if we know the power factor. The, these are the design parameters that we have. Uh, one of the most important steps to remember is the value of L that is selected. So uh, the power factor angle should be given otherwise we can uh, not determine the discontinuous mode of operation. However, this is an assumption made here. Step 1 is to determine the average value of output voltage which is given by the formula. One of the most commonly made mistakes with respect to this is that Vm value should be substituted as 230 into root 2. Next step is to determine the RMS value of output voltage. Uh, this is given by uh, direct substitution of the formula. Uh, one of the most important steps uh, is that the firing angle uh, is 30 degree here and how do you enter 30 degree in MATLAB because MATLAB only takes uh, uh, in seconds and it does not take the input in degrees. So this is an important thought process and this is an important uh, step that is involved. So the frequency is chosen to be 50 hertz and the reciprocal of it is 0 0.02 seconds for one complete cycle. So that corresponds to 360 degree. So 180 degree corresponds to 0 0.01 seconds. So every degree corresponds to 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds. That means if we are choosing a firing angle of 30 degree, multiply it with the standard value that is there, you will be getting this value of 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 seconds. Once we are clearly aware of the design, we will be able to get started with the simulation process in MATLAB. So let's go to MATLAB. So uh, in MATLAB, uh, we need a Simulink library browser to search certain parameters or you can directly add them up. First block that is required is PowerGU. PowerGU is one of the most important blocks that is... Uh, uh, the next one uh, we need is a thyristor. So search for thyristor. You will be uh, getting thyristor directly over in here in the bottom. Add this block. Uh, we need an AC voltage source. Uh, as a supply so search for it you will be getting this at this block uh, next we need a pulse generator to trigger the thyristor so we'll be searching for pulse generator and add this block so uh, we are using uh, an rl load so search for series rlc branch later on we can convert it into uh, rl load we also need um, a display in order to display the output uh, amount of uh, output voltage that is there so add this block we need a scope to uh, see the waveform so add that block as well uh, we need uh, to measure the rms and average value so search for mean we can get both mean and RMS value in that case scroll down don't choose this RMS value this is for a different purpose uh, so come down get this RMS value add this block use this block as well be careful with respect to mean with respect to phaser and variable frequency we are not going to use that so once we have uh, all of these uh, we can arrange them according to the positions that they are supposed to be um, and the load is supposed to be in the uh, secondary side so uh, once we have them uh, we can get started with the circuit connection uh, so we will rotate this and uh, uh, double click on it one of the most not uh, uh, it is not required in this case is to disable the measurement port and then we can copy this uh, have a fourth thyristor in a form of a bridge so we can copy this together and then paste it just to save a little more amount of time once this is done uh, connect this in a form of a bridge uh, so uh, be careful with the connections uh, part uh, it should exactly look like this um, and uh, we need an AC so uh, supply voltage over here uh, according to our design one of the most important steps while entering the peak amplitude is we have to substitute 230 into root 2 and not only 230 that is 325.26 in this case so be ex very careful with this step and uh, the frequency is chosen to be 50 hertz click ok uh, one of the most important uh, parameters to be entered is uh, this one so pulse generator block um, this uh, this time period is 0 0.01 seconds for half cycle so enter that pulse width doesn't matter at all don't even um, think for think of it uh, at this moment uh, we will uh, be using a phase delay of uh, 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 as I already mentioned in the design steps so uh, please take a look uh, at it if you have any confusions please do let me know now uh, rotate this load 
and then uh, we'll be using RL load so select that and then the value is chosen to be 10 ohm select that and we are using a 100 milli entry inductor so select it uh, enter the value of 100 milli uh, entry and then connect it according to the circuit diagram so uh, once we are done with it the supply should be connected across the source side in this form so once we're done with this uh, the pulse generator block is used to trigger the thigh resistors uh, so there are two different possibilities that can be done um, i am triggering both uh, like i am triggering uh, for both the half cycles after 30 degree if you need to trigger it for a different uh, cycle then you can copy this pulse generator block and enter the parameter according to the phase delay that you want in the second half cycle so uh, we need an output voltage measurement block to determine the output voltage across the load uh, we'll be connecting it across that point uh, one of the most important steps uh, that needs to be taken care is you need to double click on the rms value change it to 50 hertz uh, the fundamental frequency otherwise uh, the synchronization with respect to our circuit diagram will not take place and will not get the right value so once that is done we can connect it across this point and uh, we can connect the rms value across the output voltage port as well and then uh, display the waveform uh, through this display screen so uh, we don't need a huge simulation time of 10 seconds because these are static loads so uh, change it to one second and then uh, we can run this to check the output voltage and the waveform as you can see we are approximately getting closer to the values that we have designed one of the major reasons why we are not getting exact values is because uh, there are four thyristors used and you can see there are snubber resistances internal resistances and forward voltage drop across the devices and this contributes uh, these are not ideal switches so this contributes to a lot of uh, losses and uh, you'll not be getting a, a exact amount of output voltage that is there so let's click on the scope uh, double click on the scope to check the output waveform and how it looks like so zoom it out to check how exactly it looks so if you can see here um, the during the positive half cycle after 30 degree it will wait for 30 degree and then it will conduct and during the negative half cycle it will still continue to conduct because of the presence of inductance and uh, after that what happens is 3 3 and t4 are triggered and it starts conducting you can further uh, check this by having different firing angles as well so that's one of the possibilities uh, so that's it for today if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to our channel if you have any questions feel free to uh, write down the questions in the comment box below thank you